Hello and welcome to the very first episode of the Red Team OPSEC podcast. My name is Jeremiah Telemontis and I am your host. First and foremost, thank you for listening in. Uh, but before I jump right in, uh, I think it's only appropriate for this first episode to take a few moments and unpack some of the primary subject matter I'll be discussing in this podcast. So you may be wondering, what the heck is Red Team OPSEC? And what about all the cool stuff you promised to talk about? Well, I aim to talk about that cool stuff, and I hope to cram as much of it in to each episode as possible. But for now, let's level set. In this podcast, I will be talking a lot about physical security. Not the type that you're probably thinking about, like to do with bodyguards or anything like that, but the kind of security that has to do with building security or facilities security. The kind of physical security that businesses and governments care a lot about. You see, organizations like Wells Fargo, Facebook, Target, governments, the U.S. government, Organizations of all different sizes and industries have these safeguards. They have things that they need to protect. National secrets, um, customer data, inventory, computers, intellectual property, trade secrets, marketing plans. And they put these things into place, these defenses, these safeguards in place to try and protect them. These things could include security cameras, often do, Motion sensors, alarms, guards, armed guards, security fences, underground sensing systems. These businesses and governments have a lot to care about. They have a lot to protect. And they hire people like me and maybe listeners like you to test these defenses in a very, very realistic way. How do they do that? We do it by conning employees, evading cameras, picking locks, deceiving receptionists and other employees, thwarting motion detectors, jumping fences, assuming different identities entirely, hacking into systems, computers, and all around breaking into buildings. So this, my friend, is the Red Team OPSEC podcast. I'll be sharing a whole lot about my thoughts on physical security, operations, tactics, the different tools that I've used across the years and and across the different operations. And of course, a few war stories from my exploits as a professional red teamer. So if this is something that tickles your pickle, I invite you to stick around and keep listening. So in this episode, I will cover a few talking points, but first I'd like to give you a little bit of information about me. I am the author of the Physical Red Team Operations book, as well as the Social Engineers Playbook. Both of those are out on Amazon. I'm the founder of the uh, cybersecurity firm Red Team Security, and uh, I'm a lead instructor at Red Team Security, and I've been doing this kind of work in information security for a little over 22 years. I've been red teaming for well over a decade. And uh, I was recently a subject of a mini documentary called Hacking the Grin. So let's dive into a few points. First uh, of a few I'd like to talk about is physical red teaming. What is it? Is it really a thing? I've heard about red teaming. I've heard about penetration testing. Do you really actually get hired to break into buildings? Well, yes, you do. Let me, if red teaming is a new term to you, let me just do a quick Wikipedia definition for you. So Wikipedia says this, a red team is a group that helps organizations to improve themselves by providing opposition to the point of view of the organization that they are helping. So keyword is they're an opposing force. They're, they're the devil's advocate and they're aiming to do this sort of out of box thinking, problem solving. Now, if we scroll down a little bit more and look at this Wikipedia definition, you'll see that 
in the context of computer security, a red team is a group of white hat hackers, now white hat hackers being the good guys that are often consultants or employees, you know, helping organizations to try and find these vulnerabilities. So our red team is a group of white hat hackers that attack an organization's digital defenses as an attacker would in order to test the organization's defenses. Okay. So in a, in a sense, from this computer security version of it, right there, what they're really doing is they're attacking their, their networks, their perimeter, right from the internet, for example, spamming, um, social engineering folks through email. They're trying all these different met- methodologies in the quote unquote digital infrastructure infrastructure as an attacker would be right. And they, they aim to do this because they want to identify the organization's weaknesses and at the end of the day, as a consultant or as a white hat hacker, you present to your, your client or your managers and say, this is what we did. Um, and these are the vulnerabilities we, we discovered. Let's move forward and get these fixed. That is common in the IT world. Folks like that are called, as I, as I mentioned, white hat hackers. The process is called penetration testing. So penetration testing in the IT world is not a new thing. In fact, it originated in the 70s and kind of evolved greatly from there into application pen testing, IO, you know, uh, device pen testing, uh, medical device pen testing, mobile phones, app, applications, networks, all, all these different aspects of it. And today, many organizations do this regularly. But they only focused on the technical aspect, the digital infrastructure, as it mentions here. So this aspect of red teaming, which is the opposition uh, angle to it, how is that different? And what is physical? Well, red teaming in the sense of IT is very much the same. It focuses, it has this adversarial approach, but it still focuses on the technical aspect, the digital infrastructure. So what we mean by physical red teaming is that we're not, we're not going after the digital infrastructure. In this case, we're going after the physical aspects. We're going after the, the physical infrastructure, the, the buildings, the substation yards, the warehouses, the office suites. So, when it comes to a physical red teaming, yeah, it, it actually is a thing. And we do get hired to break into buildings. Our focus is much, is much different than the digital infrastructure. Okay. However, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't say that most of the physical red teamers have come from, at least from my organization and my experience, have come from the penetration testing where they come from the, the computer the cyber uh, backgrounds. And um, to tag on to that, oftentimes they, these red team operations, these physical red team operations that my company has conducted often include an element of cybersecurity in there as well. So you can kind of see how we're blurring that line between physical security and cybersecurity. I think that this introduces a whole new level of thought specifically to our, our CIOs or our CISOs and understanding what this level, what this aspect of physical security impacts the overall security posture of our organization. Because then we're not just talking about million dollar firewalls. We're talking about the physical security controls, the practices even in place that are designed to prevent unauthorized people from getting access to paper documents, from getting access to computer systems, and all this privileged information that they should not otherwise have access to. So you may be asking yourself, so how does this really help? Well, as I mentioned before, that this really is a, it's, to me it's the giant pink purple elephant in the room of just how physical access 
these attack surfaces can really impact the security posture of an organization. You could have a million dollar firewall, but I could walk, if I could walk right into your front door, tell your receptionist, I'm here to see Steve walk, walk and uh, walk through and past her or him and get access into a very secure area of the building. I could essentially own it. I could essentially have access to that critical information that you just maybe spent a million dollars trying to protect me from doing from the internet. So it's, it's something that I deliver often to my clients as a wake up call that, Hey, this is something we need to be concerned with. Not only is it something we need to be concerned with on the cyber or in the physical realm, but also in the personnel realm too. Because these folks, they're people in charge of these systems and access to this information that need to tell me, authorize me for, you know, hey, do you have, uh, do you have an appointment? Can I see your ID? Um, I need to escort you. And so what the bad guys do in these areas is they focus in on those weaknesses, people, physical, um, leaving the door open, tailgating, all those popular things that we all know about, those all play an impact. And how do they affect? Oh, they're all correlated. And that's one of the biggest things that I, I've seen in my, my career is, is the lack of understanding of trying to correlate um, those cyber risks with cyber, um, excuse me, with the, the physical and the, and the personnel side of it as well. So unfortunately, the, uh, the, the industry hasn't come around yet. And, uh, I often have those, I often have those conversations with CEOs and CIOs and CISSO, CISOs about thinking more holistically, more comprehensively about your attack services and just don't think about, um, that hacker in Russia who's trying to hack into you. There's the attack surface is much greater than that. You know, and as a result, budget dollars are spent, right? And so we, we think about budgeting and putting all these new whiz bang firewalls and IDS and IPS, uh, all these protections from the internet. But we don't think enough about how that may impact the physical realm. So we've, in, in a sense, I, I talk to a lot of these folks and unfortunately they have a skewed idea of what their security posture is because, you know, maybe, they're, maybe their IDS is, or IPS is telling them that they've blocked, you know, a million attempts at trying to hack into their database. But those IPSs won't say much for somebody trying to walk in through the door um, and uh, exploit some of their poor... Uh, visitor practices and which might lead them to get access to that that database in a physical nature so too often it's it's uh, a skewed idea of how secure they are if they just consider one attack surface that being the technical side so so does this type of testing really help it helps tremendously in the aspect of it you know other folks like to say well do you really have to sneak around and 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 play uh play uh rambo and you know wear all these things and go in at night the answer is sometimes the key here is not every single operation includes that now i mentioned before that there's a video of me uh a, a documentary mini documentary called hacking the grid some elements of that will show that video will 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 show us doing certain things. Uh, Honestly, not every operation looks that way. Some operations are very low key. Um, Other operations are much different than the one that you'll see in the Hacking the Grid video. The key thing here is to remember that you need to leverage the the tactics. Here's, Here's a key word for you, TTPs. Tactics, techniques, procedures, policies, whatever you want to call it, TTPs are the things that you use, the tactics that you use to try and exploit some of these physical security vulnerabilities. And we've identified them. Does that call for a uh, tactical vest and all black gear with, you know, night vision? Not always. 
Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. The key word is is making sure that it's commensurate, that you're doing with a, what a likely attacker would do. So if I'm going after a mom and pop pizza shop, probably not going to leverage the same s- level of sophistication that we did in that Hacking the Grid video. If it's something uh, more similar to a power company who maybe have um, maybe a part of the critical infrastructure grid, yeah, I may want to I may want to level up a little bit, and so that's the key word here. And I I'd like to um, I like to call that out simply because we get a lot of I've gotten a lot of questions on that. So yeah, this type of testing, the realistic provides this this realism to it. Um, the opposing force, the red team, blue team, it's all what makes physical red teaming a a very important critical aspect of understanding what what our security posture is for an organization. I think the important key to remember is that we're not only talking about the digital infrastructure. There's much more than that. We have the personnel infrastructure, the people that have access to these computer systems. We have the physical infrastructure, the buildings, the doors, the, the alarms, the the physical infrastructure that protects these critical assets. And let's not forget that they're not all digital in nature. Sure, most of them in this day and age, most of them are. But there are plenty of opportunities for folks to go after hard assets. So something to keep in mind as we kind of continue through this. Thank you for listening. That's all we have for today. I hope to uh, produce uh, several of these podcasts going forward along the lines of physical security. Please, uh, if again, if this is something that you enjoy listening to, if this is something you consider sharing with some of your colleagues, please do so. I invite you to stick around, subscribe, and keep listening. Thank you so much, and have a great day.